In this week's video, after examining recent market history, we'll address the question, how long could the current stock rally last? To view the video in full screen mode, use this icon in the lower right hand corner of your video player. To improve the clarity of the charts, use this icon in the lower right hand corner of your video player. Respecting that this table looks noisy and confusing, we'll use images to go through it and then we'll come back to the table and use it to summarize some points. This is the S&P 500 in 2014. This is the recent correction. This is the intra-week recommended allocation by the CCM market model. Clients know that we never allocated exactly to 13% because that's an interweek reading, but we did get down near this level during the correction. What's happened during the V bottom is now we've gone from a recommended by the model 13% allocation to stocks to reduce risk during this higher risk period all the way back to an 83% recommended exposure as of the close a week ago on Friday, November 7th. So what we're looking at is similar cases. What happened after we had a reading at 13 or lower or very close to 13 and then we moved back to 83, what happened next? Since we're only looking back 10 years in market history, we want to make the point that we agree that this is anecdotal evidence, but we can still learn from it. What we're looking at here, this is the S&P 500 in 2003. So to give you an idea of how this compares to the present day, this low here after a correction would be similar to the mid-October low that we have. This point, May 8th, 2003, is similar to last Friday, November 7th, 2014. So the market model reading was roughly 13 here. Then it took us back to an 83% allocation at this point. So this is very similar to the present day. What happened from this point going forward? Well, in this case, the market rallied quite a bit further. It rallied 26.41%. Since we'll be using the exact same concepts, we'll move more quickly. This is similar to the October low. This period here is similar to November 7th. What happened next? The S&P 500 rallied an additional 2.47% before hitting an intermediate term peak on August 3rd, 2005. 2006 and 2007, a correction a low, the market model rallies to roughly 83% exposure from under 20% or low teens. Here, this is similar to the present day. What happened next? The market rallied an additional 10.26% over the next several months. 2009, 2010, S&P 500 daily. This point here would be similar to the October low where the market model was telling us that the profile was around 13%. We rallied here to 83% exposure. What happened next? This point here is similar to November 7th of 2014 from a profile perspective. What happened next was the S&P 500 rallied for several months, gaining an additional 23.61%. 2010, 2011, correction, here's your low. This point here would be similar to November 7th, 2014 from a market profile perspective. What happened subsequently, the market rallied an additional 18.9% over the subsequent months. 2011, 2012, this is similar to the October low profile-wise in 2014. This is similar to early November profile-wise 2014. What happened next in this case, the S&P 500 gained over 8% before peaking on an intermediate term basis on April 2nd, 2014. 
2012. Second half of 2012, this is similar to the recent October low, similar to November 7th. After that, the market rallied an additional 4.91%. The table can help us summarize the results and point out similarities and differences to the present day. So what we did was we went back and we found any case that looked like this. 13% are in the neighborhood or lower, rallied to 83% in the market model. So for example, in this case, the low was 14% instead of 13, and we rallied to 83, and then we compared what happened next. The answers to those questions, there are significant differences, but these are the only examples that we have going back 10 years. So they're what we have to work with. What is similar is the profile move. What is different is this rally in the present day, it only took us 23 calendar days to get from a 13 to an 83 on the market model. Whereas in these historical cases, on average, it took 90 days to do this. And what that tells clients is typically we would scale back in over a period of months or weeks rather than this V bottom. But as you can see, the market model is not based on history. So if the market improves quickly, it can scale back in quickly. So typically it takes 90 days. This time, no question, it's different. And we have to take that into account. The average gain in the historical cases that we looked at from this point was an additional 13.53%. What that tells us is if we had the average outcome, we would move from our present level of roughly 2040 on the S&P 500. If we gain 13.53%, we would land a little over 2300, 2307. In the historical cases, it took 157 calendar days on average to gain the average gain of 13.53%. Therefore, if we followed the average path, we would gain 13.53% from this point here, and it would occur over the next 157 calendar days. That would take us to 2307, and we would land there on roughly April 12th, 2015. Are we predicting our forecasting here? No, we're not doing any of that. And none of this will impact how we use the model or how we manage. So what's the purpose of this? The purpose of this is to help us understand that it is possible, based on recent history, that in the present day, the stock market could rally for several more weeks or several more months. And in all of these historical cases, and again, we respect this is a small sample size, in every case, the S&P 500 gained a little bit more than where we are now. The smallest gain was 2.47%. The largest gain was almost 27%. So what this tells us is to keep an open mind about all outcomes. Sometimes it's difficult to wrap your arms around the fact that a market that moved from here to here can continue to gain. But history tells us that we should at least keep an open mind about that outcome. We should also keep an open mind about sideways outcomes and bearish outcomes. No need to predict. We just need to pay attention meticulously, come to the market with an open mind, listen to price, and adjust accordingly. In the remainder of the video, we'll look at present day charts. Respecting everyone's time here, we're gonna move very, very quickly. This is one of the ratios used in the model. This is risk off TLT relative to SPY weekly. This is the present day. Why has this market been so challenging when we have unprecedented and rare things? It's a very, very low conviction market. This ratio today here, as of the close on November 14th, is in the exact same place that it was a year ago, telling us that investors are very, very confused. They don't know whether they want to own treasuries 
or stocks, compare that to a much, much easier period to manage through 2013. The ratio here goes nowhere. That's the slope of the line. The slope of the line in this case is clearly slanting towards stocks. This is high conviction, much, much easier to make money. This is low conviction, wild swings and whipsaws, much, much more difficult. The important thing here is this is frustrating. If we stick to our discipline, the market will eventually get us into the right place. So it's extremely important not to get frustrated and let the frustration break us out of our discipline. If you follow us on Twitter, you'll remember we tweeted out this chart near the low and said this low was important until proven otherwise, and we said that the market seemed to care about these slopes. Well, this did indeed turn out to be the low. You can see that we're back up to the top of the trend channel. I didn't tweet this chart last week because I feel that it will bring bias. It's easy to look at this chart and say, we're going to bounce back down. We're going to bounce back down. That may be what happens. This is potential possible resistance. Why we say potential or possible is we could break out to the upside. So we don't want to anticipate what's going to happen next, but we need to respect that even under the most bullish circumstances, we could move back to around 2,000 and then make a higher high or move back into this area and then make a higher high. We'll keep an open mind. Quick update to our NASDAQ daily. Good news. We've held this gap here. This is a bullish gap. The longer we stay above it, the better. The bad news is we have somewhat of a stall look and an indecisive look here. This is another chart used in the market model. Point of the exercise, this is November 2014. On the 14th, new highs minus new lows, cumulative, has just crossed back above its 50-day moving average. Historically, what might that mean? If you're experienced in technical analysis, you know that all things being equal, you'd prefer to see this line here rise. So let's just look at some anecdotal cases from history. This is what happened here in 2014. Cross back over here in 2006. We rally in the S&P 500 here for several more months after the cross into 2007. From a bearish perspective, new highs minus new lows drops below the 50-day telling us that the probability of bad things happening in the stock market is higher. Flip the coin back to the bullish side. 2014, we get a cross here. What happened next? The market rallied for several more months. Can we find examples in history where we get somewhat of a whipsaw here? Yes, we can. But all things being equal, you'd rather have this line be rising and above the 50. Just to keep regular viewers up to date, our weekly charts used in the model S&P 500 still has a full bore bullish look. Stocks versus bonds has also moved back into a full bore bullish look. The Nasdaq as well. What does all of this tell us? It doesn't tell us anything about what will happen next week. It just tells us that the probability of good things happening is better today than it was at this point here, or this point here, or this point here, when actually bad things did indeed happen. Same concepts. Weekly charts as of a close on Friday, November 14th. Dow, full bore bull. Is it all fun and games? No, credit markets still a little concerning here. Full bore bear. NYSE broad composite stock index. A little bit hesitant, but still has a full bore bullish look. We always talk about maximum flexibility, which was helpful near the recent low. However, we have some bullish anecdotal evidence that we've talked about, but it's extremely important, especially in a market that's doing rare and unprecedented things to keep an open 
mind about where we go from here to maintain flexibility. Before we close, from a bullish perspective, the VIX did something unprecedented that you can read about by Googling this. The bullish case is also supported by our successful retest of this long-term breakout on the NYSE composite. However, the bearish case is supported if we zoom in here a little bit. You'll also notice on this weekly chart, the broad market has made a series of lower highs and lower lows telling us to keep an open mind. The bulls would prefer to see this chart close above this level and this level. It hasn't happened yet. We'll go into next week with a flexible, unbiased, and open mind. How do we track all of this and convert it into a usable and actionable format in a reasonable amount of time? The sub-models, we answer binary questions, some of them manually done, some of them programmed in Excel, and we also enter in unbiased and hard data. The sub-models allow us to get a handle on the market's current profile, and the master CCM market model then looks at the current profile, compares it to past profiles, and recommends a prudent allocation between risk assets such as stocks and conservative assets such as bonds. Conservative assets can consist of cash, bonds, currencies, or any number of investment options. If you'd like to learn more about the market model or our money management services, you can visit our website, follow along on Twitter, Facebook, read our blog, Short Takes, or watch past videos on the Shivako Capital channel on YouTube. The material in this video has no regard to the specific investment objectives, financial situation, or particular needs of any viewer. This video is presented solely for informational purposes and is not to be construed as a solicitation or offer to buy or sell any security or any related financial instruments, nor should any of the content be taken as investment advice. Any opinions expressed in this video are subject to change without notice, and Shivako Capital Management, LLC, or CCM, is not under any obligation to update or keep current the information contained herein. CCM and its respective officers and associates or clients may have an interest in the securities or derivatives of any entities referred to in this material. CCM accepts no liability whatsoever for any loss or damage of any kind arising out of the use of all or any part of this material. We recommend that you consult with a licensed and qualified professional before making any investment decision.